Hi, welcome back to Bergeron Briefs. In this episode, five minutes or around on why you have to have a power of attorney. You just have to have one. Suppose you're Frank or Mary. Uh, you've got these kids, Peter, Paul, and Mary Jr. Your goal is to stay at home until you die. Your kids are all, and be buried in the backyard. Your kids are all happy. What happens if Mary gets sick, though? Uh, well, and the, and, the, and, and the assumption is, if Mary gets sick and Frank's still fine, that Frank's gonna be able to kind of take care of things for her, and chances are, uh, in terms of their assets, that's gonna work okay. But if, what if Frank's dead? In that case, somebody else needs to be handling those things for her. Um, and all of those things get handled by, by the person who has your power of attorney. What is a power of attorney? It's a document through which you name an agent, a person who's gonna act on your behalf to take care of your, your matters at the bank, with, your insur with insurance companies, going to the city hall, arguing about your taxes, doing any number of things. Um, it does not um, make, it, the person with the power of attorney, as the power of attorney agent, can't make medical decisions for you, but is the person that if you were being, if you were going to an assisted living or a nursing home or any of these things, actually signs the documents that will, that it, with the nursing home in order to get you admitted. So there, it's a really important document. You have to have it. Executing a power of attorney, you don't need any witnesses. You ought to have a notary. Uh, notary. A notarization is not required in a power of attorney unless the attorney is actually using that, that power of attorney in order to record documents at the Registry of Deeds on your behalf. But as a practical matter, I have found based on over 40 years of experience, if you hand someone a power of attorney from someone who's not there and the power of attorney has a notary, people buy into it. If it doesn't have a notary seal, people are gonna be very questioning of it, so have it notarized. Uh, on your power of attorney, Mary typically would name her spouse. Uh, she'd name Frank, but if Frank weren't around or if Frank were sick, uh, she would typically name a, a successor. She can name one people, one person. She can also name many people jointly and severally. So in this case, she could actually name all of her kids, Peter, Paul, and Mary Jr., to act on her behalf, she could say that they're acting jointly and severally, which means any one of them can act on her behalf if the others aren't around. So it really, it's a great time saver. Um, should you specify in your power of attorney that it only kicks in if you're disabled? My experience, that is a big mistake because then the person with your power of attorney is gonna spend all kinds of time trying to convince the guy at the bank, the person at the insurance company, any of these other people, that you're actually disabled. What does that mean? Does that mean a special doctor's certificate? Does the bank have a special certificate? Are they going to send this to their lawyer? Don't do it that way. If you're concerned about the power of attorney not being used until you are disabled, have it held in escrow. Have, us hold, have your attorney hold it. Have somebody else hold it. Don't give it out, but specify that it will only be given out if that person feels that you're disabled. You can always revoke your power of attorney at any time. Uh, except um, you ought to make it in writing and you ought to tell anybody that who, who, with whom you have been dealing, like the folks at your bank, that you revoked this power of attorney. The reason for that is there's typically a provision in the power of attorney that says that anybody who is, who is dealing with the person you've named as your agent, if that person shows them the power of attorney and signs something saying that it hasn't been revoked, the bank will continue to deal with them because they're not liable. As a result of that, if you haven't notified the bank because you've had an argument with somebody, perhaps you weren't so crazy about Frank, or, or excuse me, you were always crazy about Frank. Maybe Frank has died and you're not so, and you're not so crazy about your son Peter anymore because you don't think he's taking care of your affairs. If you revoke the power of attorney to him, you need to tell the bank so that Peter can't go in and close out your accounts. Signing a new one does not revoke an old one. So by simply signing a new power of attorney, this is different from healthcare proxies, by simply signing a new power of attorney, you haven't revoked your old one. So you have to specifically revoke those two. Uh, you should specify in the power of attorney that if at some point a court determines that you're incapable of taking care of your affairs in general, that that same person is going to be named as your, as your conservator on the conservatorship. Uh, I hope that this has been helpful for you. If you have any questions, please give me a call at 508-860-1470 or email me. I never charge for legal advice. Thanks. Look forward to talking to you at some time if you need it.